Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10-minute talk that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume or for long-time speakers to test drive a new talk idea. Right now, we have our very own Cal Evans. Tonight, he's going to be talking about PHP 7 uh, Jumpstart, its exceptions in the engine. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Cal some feedback. Cal, take it when you're ready. Hi there, everybody. Thank you for joining um, tonight's Lightning Talk. It is my privilege to um, actually do this. This is actually the fourth time I've given this little portion of a uh, of this talk. Uh, this is a part of a full day-long talk that I do on PHP 7, and I've got a one-hour version, and now I have a 10-minute version. Um, but I gave this this morning, and... Um, some things have changed, so you guys are my test bed for this. We're going to talk about exceptions in the engine and the throwable interface in um, PHP 7. Now, um, those, these were created. There's the URLs if you want to go to these. And, of course, of those of you on YouTube, um, you can copy those if you want to actually see the RFCs. Um, Nikita Popoff and Aaron, I'm not even going to try Aaron's uh, last name, are the ones that created these. Now, um, exceptions in the engine have been in PHP 7 for a little while now, but on uh, the June 17th, which if you're listening live, that was yesterday, we actually got the throwable interface and it totally changed exceptions in the engine. So this talk has changed dramatically in the past 24 hours. But what is all this? Well, the problem is right now, damn near anything can break your PHP code. Okay. Um, if you have something go wrong and you get a fatal exception or fatal error, boom, your program's done. Um, either you're going to see um, code spew on the screen, or if you've got everything turned off and logging, then you're going to get a white screen, which is just as confusing to users because they still don't know what to do. There's no way to there's no way um, for us to gracefully handle most errors. Yes, we do have the error handler, but that's not always the best way. Um, fatal errors don't invoke a finally block in a try catch finally. Uh, we have this wonderful little thing that, um, you know, when you've got a try catch finally, no matter which fired, the try or the catch, uh, I mean, no how far you got down in the try or if a catch fired, the finally will always fire, except when you have a, a fatal error, which means if you have one big try catch finally wrapping your application and you do cleanup in your finally, that never gets called. Um, your object's destructor never gets called. If you, uh, most of us know that objects in PHP have a construct, underscore, underscore, construct. Um, but a lot of people don't know that we also have underscore, underscore, destroy. And this is a great place to do cleanup if your object has created resources or connections to databases or something like that, and you want to clean those up um, before you release, or before the object releases, then you can do all of that in the underscore, underscore, destroy. But a fatal error will ignore all of that. So any cleanup you do is just left hanging like that. Fatal errors do cause the call the error handler, but that's not always the best place to do cleanup. Um, quite honestly, the the error handler is for is at the application level. It's the error handler for the entire application. It might not know the nuance of what's actually going on right now and what really needs to be cleaned up. The problem is basically that fatal errors cannot be handled gracefully. Now, we've all written code something like this. I've got a function on the screen called do something, and it takes an object as a parameter. And inside, we simply call the method nope on the object. Well, what happens if you call do something with null? Quit laughing. You've all done something like this. No, no, we would never put null in there um, by itself, but we might call it with an object that is inadvertently null. And do something, we'll take it, and it will try to fire nope, and that's going to be the end of your program. Well, now that we have exceptions in the engine and a throwable interface, we've got a way to gracefully handle this. The solution is we wrap it in um, a, a try. Oop, I forgot to change that slide. Um, we, we, we run call method, which that was what it was called earlier today. And if we pass in null, then instead of just a fatal error, um, PHP is going to throw a new error class 
and not an exception, but an error class. And that's what is, that is what has changed today. An error class, it looks very similar, or at the, at the moment, it's identical to an exception, but it is something a little different. And you can still get your get message and all of those. We'll go through the methods there in a minute. But we can catch this error, and we can gracefully handle it, okay? So the new throwable interface is um, implemented by the existing exception. The exception now implements a throwable interface. Error is a new class, and error also implements throwable. And underneath error, we have new things like type error and parse error. Type error is what is thrown when you have um, you have type hitting turned on and you validate or you um, violate the um, API's contract and you try to pass a string in when it's requiring an int or something like that. You'll get a type error. Parse error is um, something a little different. It still relates to um, strict type hinting, but if you have a um, an eval that has a string that has a PHP command in it and there's a problem with that, instead of throwing a warning, PHP will now throw a parse error, which is very important because if you're used to just saying ignoring the warning and keep moving, this is going to kill your program. So any of your evals you need to look at and say, hey, do I need to have this in a, a try-catch? <clears throat> but this is our new hierarchy. Exception and error are very similar, um, and they both implement throwable. Uh, throwable. At the moment, they're, they're identical, but there's no guarantee that they will stay identical in future versions. And then underneath error, we have type errors and parse error. Here's a hint. Do not catch errors except for logging cleanup. Unlike exceptions, errors are code issues, and code issues need to be fixed. They're not conditions. An exception can potentially be handled. An error cannot be handled. It is a code error, but PHP is allowing you to catch it so that you can, um, you can clean up, you can log what happened, and um, get ready to move on. So what's this look like? Well, here we've got... Um, a function called add and it has two parameters left and right and they're both ints and we just return left plus right okay now if we've got strict typing turned on then if we call echo uh, if we call add with the strings left and right we're going to get an error it's going to be of the type type error and you can see right there we catch it and we uh, we can deal with it we can end we can log it that that's the problem and we can end our program gracefully I also want to catch any exceptions because if there's anything else going on I want to catch the exception and ha possibly handle that and be able to recover from it but those are two different things parse error Parse error will be thrown when you have a parse error in your code. Now, this doesn't mean that you could write bad code, that PHP is going to ignore it at compile time, and then it's going to just um, throw a parse error for you when it hits that line of code. Parse errors are for two very specific situations, evals, as we've talked about, and conditionally included files that might have errors in them. And I'll show you what I mean about that in just a second. Now, eval is very simple. If I have a, um, a string called dollar sign $code and it has a PHP command in there and there's a problem with that and it evals and the compiler says, nope, can't do that, then I'm going to get a parse error and I can handle that error and then gracefully shut down. The other one, there we go, is a conditionally included PHP file. Um, imagine that this is inside of a try, uh, I'm sorry, inside of an if then statement. If flag equals true, then let's do this try and let's include this, PH, this um, code has issues.php. We're going to get a parse error. At that point, we need to log that this code has er issues, actually has issues, and shut down so that somebody can go um, fix that. Okay. But that's a conditional include. If that include were just at the top of your um, class or the top of your file like we used to do, then the compiler would pick that up. This was only um, this will only do this if it's conditionally included or if you're including based on a variable name, something that happens at runtime. BC breaks. Old parse errors were generated during eval. Okay. Um, and they were not fatal. They would generate an, uh, a warning or a notice or something like that. In the new system, 
an eval with a problem is going to throw an exception. This will stop your program. So this means you do have to worry about um, your evals and are they? do you need to um, wrap them in try catches so that you can adjust for that. Um, E-recoverable error. It used to be possible to silently ignore recoverable errors, okay, with a custom error handler. You could set a custom error handler to simply return true, boom, you're done, okay? Not anymore. E-recoverable error has been, has been converted to an error, and it will stop your program. So you need to be aware of that, and you need to be, you need to be handling that. And then um, throwable error type error and parse error are built in interfaces and classes. It will no longer be possible to use classes with those exact names. So um, you know, this is one of those situations where if you've got a good set of unit tests and um, you're using Travis CI or shippable.com or something to um, continuously build your application, adding PHP 7 in, run your test, that'll pretty much show up real quick. But um, if you don't have unit tests already built for your application, you're going to need to want, you're going to want to um, take a look at that and at the very least grep through your code for those um, names and make sure you're not using them because those will now break your code in PHP 7. Benefits. Well, finally now gets called. Destroy now gets called. And because of the way they've architected, everything is fully backwardly compatible. If you're already catching exception, you don't have to worry about anything, okay? It's not going to start catching new exceptions. If you're just catching the raw exception and then dealing with it based on the uh, message and the error number that's coming back, That'll still work, okay? Um, you won't catch the new stuff, but the old stuff won't break, and that's what we mean by fully backwardly compatible. You will want to add, um, in certain cases, a catch for the error or a specific error, um, whether it be type or um, parse or something like that. Issues. Error and parse error implement throwable and are new catchable exceptions. But um, the existing errors of e-error, e-recoverable error, e-parse, or e-compile error have been converted to an error. Okay, so um, if you were, if you've got code in there using the error handler to deal with these kind of things, those aren't, those are going away. Okay, um, it's my understanding. If I read the RFC right, 75 e errors were converted to um, throw errors now. So you know, you, you're seeing these go away, and you, you won't see any new ones come in. So try catch is the new shiny for how to handle this. And it discourages the new, uh, just, uh, the, the core is discouraging the introduction of new errors of the type of e-error or e-recoverable error. Um, the one thing that is not on this slide, and I apologize, slides, and I apologize, is that while throwable is an interface, you cannot implement it in user land, okay? Um, and this is a big deal. Uh, you, you can't create your own throwables yet. That might change in a future version, but in 7.0, you won't be able to implement, but you will be able to catch. And one of the things you could do is simply catch throwable. That works. Um, it's not the greatest idea, but it will catch everything that is a throwable, both exceptions and errors. And with that, I'm done. Hey, if you want the full day of training, check out zen.com slash php7 dash training. We have the full, um, we, like I said, we have a full day of training. I'm doing um, four, I've got four of those scheduled online. I'm doing one in Stuttgart, Germany, and one in Paris. And you're the very first people to know about this, but I'm also doing um, a three-hour version of this talk at ZenCon. So um, as a tutorial. So if you want to catch, uh, if you're going to be at ZenCon, you can catch the abbreviated version. We're just going to go over the high points on that. Um, please do me a favor. Go out to join in at that URL and give me some feedback. Tell me what I did right. Tell me what I can do better. If you have questions, please find Brandon in the chat room. He probably knows the answer better than I do anyhow. Thank you so much for your time.